interesting idea. What if they all broke, which they're not going to. But if they did, you could you could now do it. Here's the example. I'll give you this function. I'll just explain very quickly uh, the idea. You'd find some some point on this graph. Uh, I, I know for for sure that I don't really know exactly how this graph looks, but I know for sure it's continuous everywhere. Can you explain to me why this is continuous everywhere? Very good. So this is definitely going to be continuous on any closed interval. So I know this graph looks something like that. All right. I know for sure. It goes forever. Well, here's the deal. I'd plug in some numbers at some point, and what I would find is that when I plugged in 1 and when I plugged in 2, they had different signs. For instance, f of 2 was up here, f of 1 was down here. That means that somewhere between 1 and 2, according to the intermediate value theorem as used for approximating roots, I know that I'm going to have some number that gives me a 0 there. Does that make sense to you? I know it's going to be within that range because all well, my signs are different. So here's how you'd go about doing that. You'd make yourself up a table, x, y, and what you'd do is you'd have every, every value between 1 and 2 according to like a tenth or something. So like 1.0 1 1, uh, 1 and 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4, and so on. And what, it, this is a very time consuming, okay? You're, you're not going to do this all the time. You're going to use your, your calculator, of course, but this is how you would do it. I'm just giving you the how. Am I expecting you to do this all the time? No, heck no. But this is how it would work according to our, our theorem over here. What you do is you take all these numbers and you would plug them into that function. You're going to get a negative, a negative, a negative, but somewhere it's going to change to a positive. Are you with me? It's saying, like, here it's negative, here it's negative, here's, but somewhere, somewhere over here it's going to change to a positive. And I think if I've done this right, it's between 1.3 and 1.4. So this would be negative, 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 positive, positive, positive. Right here, well, you've just narrowed the range. Right now you know that the root has to be between 1.3 and 1.4. Do you see why we use the same idea? We just can't make it smaller. So you take that and you go, okay, let's try this again. X, Y, and you start now with 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, and you continue that. And then you'd find out which one of those is negative and, and where the break off is to where it becomes positive. Do you see how you can get very accurate with this? You can get to however many decimal places you want. Already I know it's going to be 1.3 something, and then I would do this one. I find out it's 1.3 something. So I could find out all those numbers as, as much as I want, as accurate as I want to be. And that's one way you could actually set up a computer program to do that for you. Program a calculator that would, that would do that for you. It might take a little bit of time, but it's possible. How many people understood the idea of applying that? All right, good deal. So just a little kind of nice something we can use there.